Hello, I'm Tim Bailey, and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the blockchain-based service network. We believe that um, blockchain technology um, has the power to dramatically change how businesses uh, offer products and services and governments uh, interact with their citizens. But there are some challenges that we need to overcome. We like to use the analogy of the internet in the 1990s. At the time, it was very expensive to build a website. You had many different small uh, corporate or university networks that weren't connected because they were uh, incompatible with each other with different standards. And we think that blockchain right now is very similar to, to that, like the internet in the 1990s. And so one of the big areas of focus for us is driving down the cost of developing and operating blockchain applications on, on the network. So the second big focus for us is interoperability. Today, you have dozens of different uh, permissioned and permissionless blockchain protocols, and it's very difficult to make them all talk to each other and interact and exchange information. So that's the second big focus for us is around interoperability. So again, going back to the analogy of the internet, um, the internet only really took off uh, when the cost of developing websites moved to close to zero, and when there were common interoperability standards like HTTP and TCIP that allowed the, the different incompatible uh, small networks to connect and form one large compatible network. And that's what the blockchain-based service network that we've created is attempting to do for blockchain. So the way to think about it, us is we're really an integrator. What we've done is we've integrated um, cloud resources from multiple big uh, public cloud providers like AWS, like Google, like Microsoft, as well as some of the big cloud providers in China like Baidu and, and China Mobile. Next, we integrated uh, permission blockchain protocols like Hyperledger, Fisco BCOS, Quorum from Consensus. We've also then integrated some of the big uh, public chains like Ethereum, EOS, Algorand, Tezos, Polkadot, and many others. And then finally, what we've done is integrated interchain services like Poly Enterprise and Arita. And that's really to help with the uh, interconnection and inter um, chain services to enable the different chains to be able to talk to each other and interact. The diagram I'm showing here is a technical diagram showing the overall structure of the blockchain based service network. At the bottom, you have the cloud layer, as I talked about, built on multiple different public cloud uh, infrastructures. We've created what we call public city nodes. And the way to think about a public city node is a, a really a virtual data center that sits on top of the cloud resources. And those, those public city nodes integrate all the permissioned and permissionless chains that I showed on the previous slide, as well as the interchain services and then developer services like testnet services, and integrated development environment services to make it much easier for software developers to build and operate uh, blockchain applications. And then you have the top layer, which is the portal layer. And so what we're doing is we're working with uh, partners around the world to build uh, BSN portals that will uh, be the way that developers will be able to access um, the BSN resources contained in the public city nodes in the diagram that you see. The BSN is governed differently uh, inside of China than it is outside of China. And so the BSN was founded uh, several years ago by the BSN Development Association, which is made up of four founding members, Red Date Technology, China Mobile, China Union Pay, and the State Information Center of the Chinese government. And those four founding members govern and operate the BSN inside of China. But just like the internet, the uh, internet operates differently inside of China and outside of China. So outside of China for the BSN, we've formed what's called the BSN Foundation, uh, which is based in Singapore and is made up of 
uh, governance body of large technology companies, as well as um, financial institutions that are going to govern uh, the BSN International, uh, which is really the BSN as it exists outside of China. So one, one network, but two governance structures. The BSN has two core products. We have the public BSN, which is that global public infrastructure built on cloud services that enables developers to build, deploy, and manage blockchain applications uh, in a public cloud environment. There are two types of portals that would give developers access to the public BSN. One is a public portal. In a public portal, again, we're working with partners around the world to to build and operate these public portals that would be the the gateway for small and medium developers and enterprises to get access to BSN resources. We then have this idea of a private portal. A private portal would be operated by uh, a larger enterprise, a technology company that had developers uh, and would be a gateway for the, for their their that company's developers um, to build uh, blockchain applications uh, in a public cloud environment. And then there's private BSN. We recognize that there are organizations like governments, uh, large financial institutions, universities that have different security requirements for building and operating applications. So we created private BSN which is a software platform that enables uh, large organizations, enterprises, governments to build, deploy, and manage their applications on their own designated network. So one example of that is an intranet BSN. An intranet BSN is a, a, a version of the BSN that an organization would install on their own private network, on premise, behind their firewall, to be used as a blockchain sandbox for innovation or also as a production environment. Another example of private BSN is a regional BSN um, where developers would get access to BSN resources in a designated country, uh, but that network would be disconnected from the, uh, the public BSN or the public cloud resources. So two core products. The public BSN, which is more focused on cost for small and medium enterprises, and then the private BSN, which is more focused on security because it's on a private network, which is more the focus for customers like financial institutions, governments, and universities. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the public BSN. Um, the public BSN is really what uh, we would think of as a global infrastructure as a service. So we are working with third-party companies around the world to create and operate BSN portals through which developers would get access to the BSN resources uh, in that public network environment. And so we really think of public BSN uh, and the public BSN portals as a one-stop shop uh, for blockchain as a service where developers can get access to those resources. We think of um, public BSN as having two types of portals. The first is a public portal. Um, the public portal is a, a blockchain as a service platform. Um, a portal operator uh, would build the front end, the user management and the billing systems on top of the BSN empowerment platform. And the BSN empowerment platform is software that includes APIs and other data and resources um, that that portal is built on top of that then links back into the BSN. There's then the idea of a private portal. Uh, private portals would be operated by uh, large technology companies that had you know, dozens of software developers who managed dozens of different chains that would access the BSN resources. So in that case, a developer wouldn't need to go to a public portal um, to get the BSN resources. They would do it through their own company's private portal, um, which probably wouldn't even have a UI, would just have direct access to the resources through APIs. Uh, here's an example of a, a portal um, this is a portal that was uh, built and is being operated by Algorand. 
who's a, a very well-known uh, public chain. Um, the, uh, a developer can go up to the Algorand portal, can select uh, different nodes. So for example, maybe they would want you know, one node on AWS in Hong Kong, uh, another node on uh, China Mobile in Beijing, and then a third node on Microsoft Azure in Singapore. They click three buttons, um, and then we uh, immediately create the network. So this is uh, this is the way that uh, a BSN or a blockchain developer can get access to BSN resources by setting up the network and then using the tools in the portal to to build their application. I'll give you a second example here, which is from a partner uh, of ours uh, here in Hong Kong, Digix Node. Digix Node has created a blockchain as a service portal um, that can be accessed via uh, digixnode.io. A developer can go up, can create their own account, and then is able to uh, build a network, uh, build an application using you know, at one of two dozen different uh, both permissioned uh, and permissionless um, chains, and then operate that chain um, in a very low cost way on the BSN resources. I mentioned at the beginning that cost is a big focus for the BSN. So as an example, um, if uh, a developer were on their own without BSN, um, trying to build, a, you know, a very basic application you know with three peer nodes on a permission chain like hyperledger fabric um, that would cost the equivalent of about twenty thousand us dollars to build and operate on an annual basis um, if the developer were to go find their own public cloud resources uh, buy those resources create their own development environment and then the operating environment uh, again that's about twenty thousand us dollars you can do that on the bsn same application, three peer nodes using Hyperledger Fabric uh, for about 500 US dollars. So 20,000 US dollars to 500 US dollars. So that's how the BSN uh, through that shared resource environment is, uh, is working to drive down costs for developers. We're talking to a number of different companies now uh, about operating uh, BSN portals. Uh, one example is a, a blockchain as a service provider. So Digix node here in Hong Kong is a blockchain as a service provider that focuses on the Hong Kong uh, and Macau markets. We also think that um, small and medium cloud service providers uh, could operate a BSN portal um, as an extension of their cloud services. So not only are they offering um, cloud services to enterprise customers, but they could offer uh, blockchain development resources for them to build on. Um, universities are also good uh, potential operators of BSN portals. Um, one of the great things about the BSN, in addition to offering low cost resources for building applications, is there are SDKs and tools and smart contract templates that make it very easy for you know, even students with very little blockchain development experience to be able to build and operate and experiment um, with blockchain technology. So we're talking to a number of universities who would build and operate BSN portals as a way to uh, help educate their students and give their students an opportunity to experiment uh, and, uh, and try out blockchain technology. We're working with um, a number of system integrator uh, and consulting firms uh, who specialize in building blockchain applications. Um, they can also operate BSN portals, which would give uh, their own developers as well as customers that they work with um, access to BSN resources. Uh, framework for providers that we're working with to integrate their protocols into the BSN uh, are building and operating uh, BSN portals. The, on the previous slide, I showed you the example of the the Algorand portal. We're talking to startup incubators uh, who are focused on incubating blockchain startups. Uh, and so they can build and operate a BSN portal to give the developers in their uh, startup companies um, uh, cheap access to uh, development resources. And then finally, vertical application providers. So 
An example of that would be a vertical application provider who focuses on uh, smart city applications. Uh, many smart city applications are leveraging blockchain technology. So uh, a provider of applications for smart cities could uh, expand the scope of, of their offering uh, by building in uh, a BSN portal so that they could offer not only um, applications, but BSN resources to developers to build those smart city applications. On a portal, uh, a developer can go in and do several things. They can purchase the BSN resources, so the compute resources, the cloud resources, the frameworks, the interchain services. They can create projects uh, and keys um, to connect to public chains. Um, they can manage uh, permission chains. They can manage off BSN system access. So for example, if you're developing a, an enterprise blockchain application, that chain might need to connect to an ERP system. And so you can manage that off BSN system access through the BSN, uh, BSN portal. You can also use the portal to update smart contracts and then to access interchain services to connect um, the different chains um, to each other and enable them to uh, exchange information. If a, if a partner is operating a BSN portal, um, they would build that uh, BSN portal on top of the BSN empowerment platform software. Um, they only need to build the uh, developer facing front end that includes the user management and the billing system. Um, the empowerment platform then provides the APIs that enable the portal to access the BSN resources and the services. The portal operator is also responsible for um, driving developer engagement and managing the users. Um, the BSN actually has no access to uh, individual consumer information or payment information. Um, that's all the responsibility of, of the partner who's operating the portal. The portal operator also would set retail pricing um, for the market that they're focused on, and then the payment methods that align to the way that um, that users are uh, paying for services in the country or the region that uh, the portal is operating in. They would also process um, the end user payments. Again, the BSN has no access to user payment information. That's the responsibility of the portal operator. Um, and then we would do the settle settlements uh, with red date technology. They would also be responsible for integrating non BSN services. Um, so as an example, we have partners who have built BSN portals, but also want to create, uh, make that portal uh, part of a marketplace for applications or a marketplace for professional services. So there's an opportunity for a portal operator to integrate multiple different types of products and services um, on a portal that also includes um, the BSN services. And then we would work closely um, with our partners to do joint marketing and PR um, to generate interest and awareness um, of that BSN portal. I wanna give you now uh, an example use case um, in Wuhan in China. Uh, we worked closely with uh, a medium-sized cloud services provider in Wuhan who wanted to build a blockchain as a service portal. Um, again, as an adjacent service to their cloud service portal. So the, the uh, cloud services provider looked at two options. The first option was to build the portal from scratch on their own. And the second was to use the BSN empowerment platform to build it with BSN. If they were going to build it from scratch, um, their research said it would cost them over 1 million US dollars. It would take eight months from start to finish and would only include one or maybe two uh, blockchain frameworks. When they, could, when they did it, uh, looked at doing it with the BSN empowerment platform, the cost was less than 150,000 US dollars. Um, the schedule was about two months. It includes um, 21 frameworks, and we're constantly updating um, with new frameworks every quarter. We have about two dozen today, 
and we expect to have around 50 by the end of the year. The other benefit was in building it with BSN, it's interoperable interoperable with all major clouds um, and other frameworks. So ultimately, um, our partner chose to build their blockchain as a service portal um, with BSN, uh, and it's up and running today. So I'd like to shift gears now and talk a little bit about private BSN. Again, private BSN is a, a piece of software that we developed um, that uh, organizations like banks, uh, universities, governments install uh, on their own network behind their firewall uh, to build, deploy, and manage blockchain applications. Again, it's the environment itself is, is like the public BSN, meaning that it integrates all the frameworks and all the tools, uh, but it's on a private network for a higher degree of security. So with private BSN, what uh, the enterprise or the government or the university is able to do is really manage all the resources, all the certificates, all the users, all the APIs, all the SDKs, all the smart contracts, all integrated into a single platform. And through that platform, they're able to manage you know, multiple uh, permission and permissionless, permissionless frameworks. Um, and uh, we're, again, constantly adding uh, new frameworks and interchain services so that the platform is continuing to evolve and grow and include um, new and innovative frameworks and interchain services. Through uh, the, pro uh, the private BSN, a system administrator uh, or a CIO is able to, uh, through one uh, dashboard, through one graphical monitoring tool, um, able to monitor all of the blockchain activities that are going on uh, on that private BSN network through that one graphical tool. Um, it also enables the interoperability across chains um, using different frameworks and between both private chains and public chains, uh, all within the private BSN. The private BSN includes a unified certificate authority so that um, all of the certificate issuing and permission settings for all the applications on that network are done um, through that single certificate or authority. So you can give it permission, take away permission for developers, for users um, of all the applications in the network. One of the other big advantages of private BSN is through the SDKs, through the tools, through the IDE services, through the testnet services on the platform, we're able to take a software developer who has no previous blockchain experience and have them developing blockchain applications within three days. Typically in a uh, enterprise environment, we often see that there are different blockchain applications running in different parts of the organization using different protocols, and using a different um, a different cloud or a different infrastructure environment. Um, with the private BSN, um, we're able to reduce cost for the business because we're running all of those applications in one integrated resource environment um, rather than set individual separate environments for each application. And because of that, um, because, of we're, because we're running in, in one integrated environment, we're able to more efficiently manage the system resources and scale them up or down uh, very quickly, depending on the number of applications that are needed. So I wanna now give you uh, two examples of uh, deployment of private BSN. Uh, the first example uh, is with the Hainan government. Um, the Hainan government uh, in China um, had some legacy blockchain applications, um, and they wanted to build uh, a platform uh, on the government internet um, that all blockchain um, applications within that province with all the government agencies um, would build on. Um, they chose private BSN because private BSN allows them to manage all the users and all the applications in one dashboard. It includes the unified certificate authority so they can have a centralized approach to 
extending permissions or removing permissions from both developers and users. It integrated um, very easily um, with the government's native security um, uh, policies. And it included um, nine uh, permission chains and one um, interchain protocol to enable the interoperability between them. The, uh, the government is also able to monitor all the activities on that network, um, including the dockers and the microservices. Uh, they had some legacy applications, as I mentioned before, they were able to migrate those um, legacy blockchain applications uh, very easily and quickly into the private PSN environment. And they've now deployed over 100 different government-related applications all within that single private PSN environment and are able to assign different permissions to users, developers, manage and maintenance staff um, through the different portals uh, in the private PSN. Second example I'd like to give you um, is with an IT consulting company that we're working with. Um, that company wanted to uh, build the sandbox environment um, where their internal developers and their customers could work together and access that sandbox um, to co-develop, deploy, and test applications. So we installed, uh, in this case, a, a private BSN sandbox environment um, through that. Again, they're able to manage all the developers, all the customer, um, and any, um, other, any other external access to the network. It supports all the major permissioned, permissionless, and interchain protocols, all within a single environment. It's interoperable across um, multiple different clouds, both a public cloud and a private cloud. It enables GitHub and Jira connections. So developers have uh, very easy and quick access to reference resources to help them uh, build uh, and develop applications. It includes uh, integrated development environments and, and browsers um, for, some of the, for some of the frameworks. Uh, again, in order to enable uh, much easier development um, for resources and uh, for developers and faster development for developers. In the private BSN, you're also able to create work groups um, so that you can uh, designate uh, individuals and developers to participate um, in specific projects. The uh, system administrator uh, for the private BSN is able to monitor and manage all the project users and all the group activities uh, through a single portal. And it includes open a APIs so that uh, uh, the customer can build custom interfaces and portals um, for their sandbox environment. So that is a, a very quick run through uh, for you of the BSN, the public BSN, again, the global uh, public cloud infrastructure um, targeted at small and medium developers who can get access to BSN resources through a network of portals around the world that we're working with partners to develop. And then the private BSN, which is a version of the BSN that uh, can be installed on a government or a financial financial institution or university private network, giving internal developers access to uh, build blockchain-based applications and then operate those uh, on uh, an enterprise's private network. So thank you very much for your time today. I hope you were able to, to learn more about the BSN. And uh, please do feel free to reach out to us if you have more questions about the BSN or how you can access the BSN resources.